Hi, I'm Michael Feinstein, and welcome to Conversations and Music. I believe in the healing power of music. I think music is a sacred thing. In my life, music has been one of the things that has healed me in many different ways. It is something that I feel is undervalued and underused in our society now. People take music for granted, and yet music has so many applications that are ignored or not thought about that I think would be particularly valuable and important for our time now. I believe that inherently music has the ability to unite people, to bring people together, to give us um, a commonality that happens with the common resonance that happens with music vibrating collectively. Music is to me a sacred thing. It is also a thing of entertainment. It is many things. Was it Beethoven who said without music life would be a mistake? Well, I feel that way. But it would be impossible for there not to be music in life because life is vibration. The world is vibrations. We know that. We are made up of physical vibrations, which is the same thing from which music emanates all sound, color, they're all vibrations at different frequencies. So to be able to harness these different frequencies and use them uh, for specific purposes makes perfect sense to me. There are many traditions that use music in a sacred fashion. Well, I suppose that every religion uses, uses it as such. And of course, the Bible begins with the word, the sound, creation. So, so there it is. Yet, I think we have... Uh, even with all of the amazing research that has gone on with music and music therapy, I think we have just barely scratched the surface of what is possible. I absolutely believe that physical healing is possible with different musical tones. Certainly spiritual healing is possible. Emotional, mental healing is possible. Just as the application of certain colors uh, in uh, an institution where people have uh, mental disorders, color is used uh, to calm or to create activity. Uh, music can be used the same way. Of course, if you go to the dentist or a doctor, they'll play you soothing music to help change the body physiologically. Uh, there are uh, harpists who play music for people who are in hospice. Is it musical? Is it thanatopsis? Uh, a, a, a good friend in uh, the Chicago area uh, is involved with a hospice and she says that when the harpists come in uh, at the very end of these uh, beautiful souls lives it transforms them in a way that they need 60% less uh, medication and go more peacefully making their transition from physical to spirit and so uh, the power of music is extraordinary our Great American Songbook Foundation has a program called Perfect Harmony where we work with people with Alzheimer's and with dementia. And this music, again, uh, creates connections in the brain. People who don't speak or can't remember things, after they hear music, they come back and uh, they are more conversant. They can sing lyrics to songs. It transforms them. And so I see all of these things and I know that music is going to play a greater and more important role in our world, especially with what is happening right now. As we turn more to music and to vibration and to resonance, it will help to heal us. We absolutely can move certain things through our body physiologically, physically by the application of sound. Um, used in connection with meditation, which is using the brain to connect with creation, with spirit, with, with whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a very powerful combination. And so in this room, my meditation room, I have different things that I use to uh, connect with what I call source, with spirit. And there are instruments, little things that I've picked up through the years that I don't use sometimes. These sorts of things that are that are that are fun. Uh, there are symbols that are used in Buddhist ceremonies that uh, create an incredible resonance. And I'm told it's the different al alloys of metal that create the different uh, frequencies, the different uh, uh, symbols.
temple bells have. Boy, I wish you could hear this when you put it right up to your ear, the different uh, overtones are quite amazing. And you can feel things happening in the brain. You feel things happening in the body. The body immediately responds to sound. When we make sounds through the day, when we go, oh, 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 all those sounds help us to release and to move energy through our bodies. And to be able to start to learn to use those sounds consciously is something that uh, I hope to get into more sometime. Uh, maybe I'll discuss it more with you uh, on another one of these because uh, there is uh, a lot to be gained from using very simple things in our lives that relate to sound. You don't even have to play a, a, an instrument. Uh, it's all there, it's all available. Now, I have over here singing bowls. I call them singing bowls. I was told that these bowls were originally created in Silicon Valley, uh, used in the uh, manufacturing of computer chips. I don't know if that's so, but these bowls were not created for the purpose for which I use them. But they have this extraordinary resonance, and I have seven bowls for every note on the scale. And each note on the scale uh, relates to chakras in the body, energy centers that I uh, believe, uh, uh, I believe chakra is a Sanskrit word, and uh, it has to do with um, these different points in our being that uh, can be opened up by the use of, of uh, a musical tone that relates to each specific chakra. Uh, different faiths have ascribed different musical tones to these chakras, uh, and uh, in, in my case, I believe that uh, the root chakra, which is at the base of the spine, is the, the, the note C. Uh, the second chakra is D. E. F is the heart. G is the throat. This is the uh, brow point and then the crown chakra. Others uh, believe that there are more chakras that, than the seven, and uh, so there are many different uh, belief systems, and um, uh, I think that they all have validity because if they create transformation and uh, make you feel better, I think that's what's important. So uh, let me um, play you with one of these bowls so you can hear what they sound like. I don't know how well the fidelity will come through, but uh, it should still give you a sense of it. Um, let's start with this one. Uh, this is... Um, uh, tuned to uh, the musical note of F, and each one of these bowls is is absolute pitch. They're they're perfectly. I got bowls that have perfect pitch of these notes because some bowls vary in pitch. So um, what what I do is use a, a striker which I rub around the rim of the bowl to create the vibration of the sound. So this is F for the heart chakra. In addition to these uh, these balls, 
I have an ancient instrument here. I say ancient. It goes back uh, to um, 1862. It's called a musical harmonicon. Uh, it was invented, I believe, in the 1830s, and Mozart actually created some compositions for the glass harmonica, which is related uh, to this one, glass harmonicon. Uh, there are different types of these of these instruments, and some, I believe, use water filled in the glasses to create different pitches. Not all of these glasses have survived from 1862, but you'll hear the different notes. So it's fun to create little melodies and songs uh, on the harmonicon and to go back in history to experience this uh, very early musical instrument. There is so much out there that is fascinating and waiting for us to rediscover, and especially in the world of music. So I look forward to discovering more of it with you in the days to come.